Most small businesses fail for a variety of reasons that you can actually control and avoid. The problem is, are you effectively using your time to make sure your business doesn't become a failure? In this video, I'm going to share with you my top six productivity book recommendations that you should read so you can actually start taking action on what really matters in your business. This video isn't going to talk about what those things are as I do have a ton of other videos on my channel that covers that. So to be clear, this video addresses the very root problem which is just getting yourself motivated and in the right mindset for taking effective action. Hi, my name is May and I help makers, artists and designers make a consistent income from selling their handmade products online. I've been self-employed and running my own business for over 14 years now and I know it's a huge struggle to have self-initiative and motivation to actually do a lot of the work that isn't fun to creatives to move your business forward, especially since we don't have the same kind of accountability that a corporate employee would have. Like if you stop showing up for your business when you're just getting started, nothing's really going to happen, right? You don't feel the pinch. But if you stop showing up to work, you can bet your boss is going to fire you. So I put together a few book recommendations that I hope you'll really love. The first is Atomic Habits by James Clear, which is an amazing book. The whole philosophy about this book is that the key to long-term success is creating small automatic habits. So I think a lot of people have experienced this issue, right? They set a big goal like, I'm going to have a successful business or I wanna make $50,000 this year from their business when they haven't even started one yet or to lose 20 pounds and then they find themselves just never getting there which leads to feeling disappointed and then giving up and the heart of that issue is that you haven't envisioned the small actionable steps that you need to to do to get there so instead of having a goal to lose 10 pounds how about just put on your running shoes every morning and just go outside and that sounds like a tiny thing, but what happens is once you set that small habit, then, hey, you know, you're already standing outside, so why not go for a walk? And then when you're walking, you might be thinking, why not go for a jog? And before you know it, you're on the path to implementing the steps to getting closer to that goal successfully. What I love so much about this book is that it's really an actionable process. These are really things that you can do to lead you to success. And this guy has an amazing story. And I don't wanna spoil it, but James Clear was basically almost in a life ending incident and he brought himself to a full recovery by using these small actionable steps. So this is an amazing thing for your business. There are just so many ways to apply these techniques, right? So how about every morning you wake up and after breakfast, you jot down some creative brainstorm ideas for 10 minutes, or you're researching one new media contact or influencer that you think might love your products. That's a small thing to do, but you might find that it completely transforms the way you run your business. I always say it's important to distinguish between what needs to get done, you know, these urgent things, but not necessarily very consequential. And then what's really important for your business to move it forward, but maybe not so urgent. There's a difference between being reactive and just putting out fires all the time versus being proactive. And so you want to be sure that you're spending enough time doing the proactive things that will actually move you forward. Okay, book number two is Indistractable by Near Isle. So we all do work on social media, right? I have social media profiles for my businesses and social media platforms are meant to be addictive. The dings, the notifications that Facebook gives you, the little bubble that you get when with the little number in it, the hearts on Instagram, all of these things are meant to keep people coming back to the platform. And this is great for us as business owners because when we post great content and people come over and people see and engage with our posts, that's good for the algorithm, right? The more people engage with your posts, the more your posts get seen by other people. This is all good for us as a shop owner, but it's also really bad for us as humans 
because we can't spend all of our time browsing on social media, right? I mean, how many times have you opened up your phone and before you know it, an hour just went by like that? I talk a lot about using social media effectively and as business owners, we sort of just want to get in and then get out and then get to doing the real work of running our business, the 80-20, the most impactful actions you can take that will actually bring your business forward. And I don't believe social media is that. Social media is a very slow burn thing. It will take you forever to build an entire business just from social media these days. And if you've watched my other videos, I believe it's media outreach and even doing Facebook ads, if you have the cash flow for it, that's going to move that needle. So this book, Indestructible, talks a lot about training your mind to block out these distractions and really getting your real, most important work done. It's an interesting story because the author originally wrote a book called Hooked, which is about how to keep people on platforms longer. And he realized a lot of the social media companies were using these psychological principles to get users more addicted to their platforms. And so it's really something we need to be aware of. You know, I'm not saying don't do social media, but just hop on, do our job, and then set it aside. Book number three is Getting Things Done by David Allen. This is old school, guys. I am not going to lie, the book is super boring, okay? But as your business grows, it becomes more and more important that you keep track of lots of little things. You know, when you start your business, maybe you're making soaps. And I remember these, I, I call them kind of the struggle but glory days. You would make your items, you would spend a lot of time doing it, and you check your email in the morning and maybe you only had 10 emails and you were plodding along and maybe you weren't really very successful or selling a lot yet, but you also didn't have a ton on your plate. But as your business grows, so does the amount of things that you need to keep track of. I know I get so many customer emails and we have to answer them and I also have to coordinate a photo shoot with an entire team, right? The photographer, the model, the makeup artist, there's so much to that. And if you have a virtual assistant, you have to manage them and make sure they're doing their job correctly and answer their questions and train them. And let's say you're doing more wholesale now and you have to call your wholesale customers on the phone to get their payment information. And on top of all of that, you have to make sure your marketing engine is working every day. It is so easy for balls to get dropped. And that's when you start getting complaints from customers because their order didn't ship on time or isn't going to arrive for a birthday party this weekend. So having a system that works for you is super important. And even if you don't do what David Allen does, which is having 30 file folders literally sitting on a desk, I don't know if any of us are going to do that, but the basics of having a system where things are assigned to a day is super important. One tidbit that I really took from this book that I use in my personal life is when you have something that needs to be done, you need to either do it or make a decision about it. There's no point letting things just sit around forever because they're not moving forward. So let's say I mentioned the photo shoot example before, right? Let's say I'm planning a photo shoot and I'm just not sure what the style is going to be. I need to either sit down and decide now or I need to put it on my to-do list for tomorrow to decide what that style should be. I can't just keep this item around saying, oh, you know, maybe I'll get inspired and I'll know exactly what the photo shoot style sheet should be because then it's never really going to happen. That's why I'm always saying, if you've had things on your to-do list for a while, it keeps getting carried over from one month to the next and it's just not getting done, you have to get clear on why you're resisting doing it. You know, maybe it's because you don't know how to do it or you haven't broken that thing into smaller steps so it feels really overwhelming and you just don't know where to start. Or maybe you just have no interest in it and you need to outsource it. The point is, take some action about it. This only gets more important as your business grows. Okay, this next recommendation is a twofer. Um, these are books that are written by Laura Vanderkam. The first book is 168 hours, which is how many hours there are in a week. And I know how she does it. 
Most of the people who are watching my videos are women and Laura Vanderkam has five kids and so she writes productivity books and she interviews leaders of companies and her philosophy is basically we all have the same 168 hours a week whether you're running Microsoft or whether you're a stay-at-home mom or whether you're running a nonprofit, it doesn't matter we all have the same hours and so it comes down to how effectively we use them both of these books are really good. All of her books are really good. I find reading her books a lot breezier than, say, Getting Things Done, which is like, as I said, really boring. Um, and they're super inspiring because most of us who are running small businesses have a lot of other stuff going on in our lives and managing our families and maybe our families who don't even support what we're doing and think it's just some crazy hobby. And so her books are really great to read just to get some perspective on time management. Book number five, Mind Hacking by John Hargrave. I think this is another great book. It can sound, if I tell you what it's about, I know it can sound a little woo-woo, but it is really about positive thinking. It's connected back to indestructible like we talked about and it's that our brains just sort of run around doing stuff all the time and rarely is it focused on getting us where we need to go. You know, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, did I leave the oven on? Or what should I be wearing on Friday? Or did I send out that email? I can't remember. And so it's super important to train your brain. And this is what he calls mind hacking to get with the program and make your brain work for you. So he gives you step-by-step -step instructions for building successful thoughts to make your dreams come true. And this is a really important concept because we all have the idea that we want our business to succeed, but how are you going to get there? One thing he emphasizes in the book is not only setting aside distractions that aren't helping and that make us worry a lot, like, oh, I got this three-star review on Etsy. My business is ruined, what am I gonna do? Getting stuck in that negative thought loop isn't going to help anything. So what actionable steps are you going to take for your business to succeed and how can you break down this bigger goal of success in your business into smaller steps? I've already been talking about actionability with some of these other book recommendations, so what are the actual actionable steps that is going to help your business succeed? Book number six, and this one's a classic in the entrepreneurial world, is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. The disclaimer on this book is that I think this is a little bit more of an introduction to the world of being self-employed and an entrepreneur. It's nothing totally groundbreaking, but if you're coming from a 9-to-5 lifestyle and you don't have any friends or people in your network that are small business owners, then this is a good book to read. This is great to just get the juices flowing for how to make your business more efficient. A lot of us who start handmade businesses, we're really used to making the entire product ourselves, right? And making the jump to bringing in other people to grow your business as a team is really hard. Maybe you're thinking about your social media and how that could do a lot better if you had a photographer, for example. Maybe you were thinking you'd have a lot less stress if you had a web developer to help you with your website. Starting out with outsourcing, basically the four hour work week is pretty good in terms of getting your mind in a place where you can start to brainstorm these possibilities. I have a lot more productivity and mindset books that I love, but then this video would just go on forever. So maybe we'll save it for part two of this video. I would actually love for you to share with me in the comments what your favorite business or productivity or mindset books are. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel for more handmade business tips and stay on to watch this next video on the screen right here.